Welcome to the demo video of how to create a SOAP web service client calling ServiceNow through a .NET C Sharp program. In order to do this, we're going to create a new project inside of our studio and we'll make it a forms application. Once that application has been created, we're going to go ahead and set up the elements on the form. As we do so, we're going to go over to the resource toolbox and grab, uh, first of all, we'll grab a rich text edit box and set it up. It's going to, con it's going to contain our output uh, from the web service. Uh, in order to do that, let's go ahead and name that element output. Now let's go and add another element to the form. We're going to add a text box where we will put the short description. So we'll go ahead and draw that text box on the form. And let's name it short description so that our code will be easy to read. And then we'll go over and we will add an element, a label element and we will set that label to be short description as well. Let's move it to fit. Okay, and then we will go and do another label and we're going to fill in a handle field which is a custom field on our table. We'll name it handle as well. We'll label it handle. And then let's go ahead and add another text box, text box from our toolbox. And we'll draw it. And we will go and name it handle. Okay, now we will just center this a little bit and we will go ahead and add a button to do a submit, to submit our web service. We will name the button submit button and give it a label of submit. There we go. Now it looks right. Now we double click on that and we get the code for the click. Now we're going to uh, set the output uh, text box to say that we are querying the web service to let the user know that something's happening here. Now we're going to need to go and create a web service uh, reference. We're going to add service reference. And here we'll put uh, the address to the WSDL that we're going to consume, which is going to be the incident WSDL. And once it loads that, we will look at the namespace. And the default, we'll just keep the default service reference one namespace. Click OK. And once that's added, you'll see that it'll be in our references list. First of all, we'll go ahead and set up the SOAP object from our namespace. We're going to call the SOAP client. And we're going to set it to a variable called SOAP, and then we'll instantiate that object. Now we're going to go ahead and create some code to authenticate to the web service. We use basic authentication for our web services, so we're going to set the username. In this case, it's just the default admin username. And then we'll set the client credentials username password to be admin as well, just the defaults. This will authenticate us as admin. Next, let's go ahead and set up the insert uh, variable. And to do that, we'll just instantiate the insert class. So that's the insert method. And we also need an insert response so that we know how to translate the uh, response that we get back. So we'll instantiate a variable called response. Okay. Then we will go ahead and set some variables. We'll set our short description. We'll grab that from our short description text box. We'll grab the text from that. And then we're going to set the handle field as well, which is u underscore handle because it's custom. And we'll grab the value from the handle field that we created on our form. 
Now we'll wrap around a try statement. We're going to get a response from our SOAP insert function. We're going to pass in the insert uh, variable we created. And we're going to set the uh, output to output the uh, incident that was created with the uh, number of the incident that we got back from the web service. And of course, we'll catch any errors that come through, should we find any. And we'll output the error to the outbook, output uh, text box. There we go. We're going to go ahead and run this. Uh, this will build and launch a dialog box. We'll set our short description and we'll give it a handle and we'll hit submit. As you can see here, we got an, an exception. The exception is that uh, the basic authentication did not work. Uh, by default, the uh, service didn't, doesn't uh, support basic authentication, so we have to go to the app config module. We have to modify the security mode transport and add basic authentication transport port data there. Once we've done that in the app config, we'll go ahead and run this again. Set a short description in the handle. We'll submit. And we see that we get a new incident created. So let's run over to our instance and look for that new instance. There's our short description. Uh, there's the handle that was set. Now, what if we want to add a new field? We're going to personalize our form. And we're going to add a new field called new2. And we're going to move it up under new1 and hit save. There's our new field right there. Now we're going to go back to our code. Uh, .NET does not automatically uh, read that new field. We have to update the web service. And once we've done that, we can add the code to reference new2. And we're just going to hard code it to setting this. And let's launch it again. Up comes the form. We'll go ahead and set a short description and a handle. We'll hit submit. We'll get a new incident created. So we'll jump over to our ServiceNow instance, open the incident, and there's the setting on the new field that we created. Hope you enjoyed this quick demo on how to create a .NET client that calls a direct web service in ServiceNow. Thank you for watching this video.